everybody, my name is Noah and I am the Day by Day Pagan and welcome to this video. So today I'm going to be refreshing and redoing my altar. It felt like it was time and while I do that, I will be explaining my experience, kind of ending my relationship with Brigid or de-escalating that relationship to use a term from polyamory. So at the end of this, I will give some close-ups to my altar and talk a little bit about why I did what I did for it, but I'm not going to go into detail in any spell work that is out and about. So I will be keeping some things private. You don't need to keep your altar private. You also don't need to show it. Do whatever feels right for you. Moving on. So I met Brigid for the first time in January 2020 at a reclaiming class. Reclaiming is a tradition of witchcraft that is similar to fairy. Um, it's a kind of an offshoot, vice versa. Um, it also is um, very um, Wiccan based. It kind of comes from that roots, those types of magic, but it's, you know, it's its own thing. But I took an elements class, which is where you kind of get to know the elements, you know, water, fire, earth, air, spirit, through the reclaiming framework and the goddess that was the theme for this two-day class was Brigid. So of course I met her through that and really enjoyed the class and it really brought me into the reclaiming community which I'm still a part of to this day more than two years later, two and a half years later. And I didn't immediately connect with Brigid after that but I was looking for some deity to work with me in terms of writing, in terms of plants it just kind of felt like you know that was kind of what i was looking for and i realized then that it was her reaching out to me because i am a writer and that was initially why i wanted to connect with her but the longer i was you know working with her and of course this was at the beginning of covid um so february april march you know june all throughout that year i found that she helped me with housework and getting chores done and that is still true up through my time working with her um she would kind of nudge me look you know you have a pile of clean clothes that need to be folded you really need to do the dishes you should probably make a meal at home so that you can you know make sure you get your body gets exactly what you need i was actually diagnosed with pcos during this time so i was very much aware of what i was putting into my body and what served my body better and what I needed to be eating. So she really, you know, kind of helped with that, especially as the pandemic and social distancing and quarantine became more of a concern in March and April and so on. I became very close with the food aspect because I wasn't visiting people, I wasn't going out to eat. You know, we were worried about there being potential food scarcities and people stockpiling food and the like. So doing that cooking and that being in the kitchen, which is part of her domain, the hearth, really connected me to her and I had a candle and a little area set up dedicated to her in our apartment. In 2021, um, we moved at the very beginning of the year into the place that we now live in and I set up a space for her on the windowsill in our kitchen. She had a candle that was dedicated to her and she was just a part of my kitchen and I started collecting like artwork and stuff associated with her. And I attended the winter witch camp for reclaiming and it was online, obviously, January, February, 2021. And there was a class during that two week period that surrounded Brigid and crafting. So that was when I officially set up a shrine for her and had like a statue and all that good stuff. I'll insert a picture somewhere if I can. Um, I think I have a picture of it maybe. And I really continued working with her. And during that time, I started focusing on working towards doing things that are important to me, even if success is not guaranteed. This was something that I took away from Witch Camp in general, but it became kind of my lesson or my work with Brigid. I did things like making a sourdough starter and you know creating that and feeding it and taking care of it every day and then like making a loaf of bread out of it and you know you don't know how the bread's going to turn out but you still put in the time to make all of the starter and then the dough and to cook it and all that i also brought this over into my business i'm a small business owner and i was trying really hard to get my business off the ground i started in april of 2020 so it's still relatively new and at that time it had been about a year and I was still very new to the whole thing and trying to learn. And I started doing markets in the summer of 2021. So that was a new thing. And obviously you're never guaranteed to 
earn your money back. Between then and now I've tried all sorts of new things, found things that work for me, found things that haven't worked for me, but I just, you know, kept growing and kept trying to keep that mindset and that was my work with Brigid. Then mid-June of this year I was at one of the art markets that I mentioned and I was selling my art and I was working and I was just kind of, you know, busy with customers and all of a sudden it hit me. I'm doing the thing. This lesson is complete and it was time for me to disconnect from an active practice with Brigid. And it just, in the middle of the Pride Market, I realized that was the case and it just kind of... I had this initial feeling of peace. However, though, I spent about a week of not doing anything, not starting this disconnecting or anything. I was just kind of sitting on my hands and like fidgeting like, I don't want to. I don't want to, to give up Brigid. I don't want to end this relationship. I like this relationship that I have with her. But finally, the one day I sat down and disassembled my altar. I cleansed everything physically, spiritually put away her statue. I had the box and like the foam that it went in. I cleansed the different items that were on her altar. The only things that I didn't cleanse were the candle that I had on that altar, that shrine. I put it on my main altar, which you've seen it. It's the big beeswax candle with the big clear glass container around it. I still keep that for Brigid. It really is just I don't know, sometimes I want that energy. I would like to connect with her maybe. I just, I'm not ready to give it up. Um, maybe I will eventually, maybe I won't. I also kept the one in the kitchen, that's still hers. And the artwork that I've collected for her, I've collected a couple different prints and beyond it being a sort of devotional act to Brigid to support small artists, I absolutely love this artwork. I think it's beautiful. I mean, I wouldn't have bought it if I didn't like it. So I'm planning on hanging it up maybe downstairs around the house. We have a gallery wall where we collect a lot of artwork by small independent artists. So it'll probably end up down there or maybe in the kitchen or even in our bedroom somewhere. Just hanging it up because I appreciate the artwork in general. These things might change later. I may eventually cleanse these candles or give them away because I have several friends who work with Brigid. I might pass these things on to them so they can use them for her if they'd like. But for right now, this is where I'm at. This is what feels comfortable. And it took me quite a while, even after I did all this, um, it took me quite a while to acknowledge this, to tell anyone. I actually recorded this video once before and the footage was kind of lost to the ether. Um, it was just me talking. It didn't have the altar refresh in it, obviously, but I don't know. I just really wasn't ready to tell anyone. It honestly felt like I was breaking up with someone, which is why I titled this video the way I did. It just, it hurt my heart, like the times I've broken up with human individuals, you know? And it makes me really sad. When I did finally tell my girlfriend, she's not a witch or a pagan or anything like that, but she is super supportive and understanding about the sort of stuff. She was really, you know, really good about it. You know, she essentially treated it like I was coming to her and telling her I broke up with someone. And, you know, that was really what I needed. First of all, it really helped me make it feel like it was real and it was something that was happening and it wasn't necessarily a bad thing. But it also made me feel more comfortable with re-recording this and telling you all. And I'm actually haven't told any of my witchy friends yet. Um, not that I owe them an explanation or anything, but I just, I don't know, it feels weird. That's the best way I can put it. It feels weird. So I will, I guess, share this video with them and then they'll know. But yeah, it's, it's strange. I've never had this sort of thing happen before. I have been pra a practicing witch, pagan. I mean, those two terms aren't interchangeable, but I kind of, my witchcraft is connected to my paganism and my heathenry, so I kind of connect them myself personally. But I've been doing this since 2017, so almost, what, six years? No, five years at time of recording. Almost exactly five years at time of recording. So it really just... This is the first time that it's happened and I've been working with different deities since 2018, I believe, maybe 2019, early, early 2019. Um, and Brigitte's not the first deity I've ever worked with, but she was the first one that I did any active work with. Um, I spent a lot of time worshiping Loki before I started working with him. So it's just, I don't know. It's a really emotional thing. I'd love to know if any of you have gone through this sort of thing. Was it super emotional for you? Was it a bad breakup, so to speak? Like, 
would you like to share why you ended up not stopping a work with a deity or a spirit or was it simply that your time with them was done i'd love to know i also have not put aside the idea that i may work with brigitte again in the future to me it's not oh we're done forever maybe maybe there will be a time when she calls to me again and says look we have work to do i don't know i you know i may pass on the rest of the items of hers that i have still that i don't want like the statue i mean i love the statue it's gorgeous that's why i picked it but i may pass that on to someone else because while i would hang up the artwork it feels odd to have the statue just you know kind of hanging out but yeah that's pretty much everything about my quote unquote breakup with brigid and the experience of that and how it felt and all of that so yeah now i'm going to spend a little bit of time telling you about my altar and what i did and what my choices were Okay, so this video was actually taken a couple days after I finished, so I had everything set up. I'd used the altar a little bit, kind of broken it in, so to speak. But this is the main area. Um, it is a coffee table that I would love to um, strip and stain someday. This is the area of Loki and Segan's shrine. It's mostly Loki's because I've worked with him the longest, but there is an area for Segan there you can kind of see, and I have his picture there. Basically anything pink on this shrine belongs to Loki and some of the not pink stuff belongs to him too. This purple bookshelf I would love to get rid of and find something else. On top of it is where I have my active spells that I'm working on right now, but I didn't want to share them. The shelves are where I keep all my tarot decks and my books and notebooks. It's just, you know, a great little spot. I don't really like the size of the shelves though. This is an area where you have my baby boy ravioli he came in to help he's a he's a big fan but yes this area i have a mortar and pestle i have the remains of some working i did i have some of my magical jewelry that i like to keep charged and then in the back i have my runes which you can see here then um, while i'm showing these i'll tell you about the little glass cake container type thing but it has some pieces in there i'd like to put together some sort of bone throwing kit or a crow oracle eventually then we have this oil it is sort of a road opener oil i haven't decided on a name for it but i guess that's basically what you could call it and then i have a little vessel full of salt This is some loose incense I made for Loki following a book. I'm doing the lessons in the book, then I will do a review of it. I keep my testosterone on my altar because that is a sort of ritual to me and Loki. And then we have the rock box, as we call it. Um, but in front of that, we have this little embroidery that someone did for me that says Loki and Segan on it. I think it's really beautiful and I'm really blown away by the talent. I don't really know much about embroidery. I do some cross stitch, but I'm not that skilled at embroidery. For the rock box it's actually a um, jewelry box I got at a thrift store I ripped out the awful cardboard felt that was in it and as you saw I put the rocks in there the crystals that I have um, I made little inserts for it out of fabric I thought about gluing them in but I decided just setting them in there was better so yeah I used a little bit of quilt batting and some fabric that I had lying around and I'm very very happy with how it turned out I think it is pretty great Obviously, I have to move stuff around if I need to get in there. And I'm just showing off here some of the little trinkets that I have for Loki. This is a unicorno. I just find that I really enjoy giving him really pink, nauseatingly sweet and cute different types of offerings, and he seems to really enjoy it as well. This little plate is my offering altar type thing to Segan. I have just started working with her, so there's not much here, but as I work with her, I look forward to adding things and getting to know her better. So that's really it. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, and I look forward to hearing about all of the different things that you all have to say about this video. Um, I get some really great comments and I really do love it. So yes, if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, I have the Day by Day Pagan Instagram account. I also have a WordPress blog of the same name where I do lots of fun book reviews. And yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you are having a great day. Goodbye.